Hello friends, Kid Charming here. And as you can probably hear, it's raining. It's mid-December pretty much and it's raining. Now, I'm not really complaining. I'm kind of complaining. I'm glad it's not snow, kind of. If it was snow on the weekend, I'd be fine. <sighs> but it's mid-December. The thoughts of a white Christmas have been drowned. Drowned. In this rain. Yep, yep, yep. White Christmas, don't think it's gonna happen. The worst thing is, is that it's like a high of 11 today, and then it's going to plummet tonight and tomorrow, and there's going to be f chances of flurries. So, all of this wonderful rain, it kind of sounded like Christopher Walken there, all of this wonderful rain is going to turn into ice. Yep. Yep. But, on the bright side, today I only work 9 to 5. Now, I like my overtime. It's not that bad. I'll be, I'll be real with you. It's not, it's not so bad. Um, my headset keeps dying, though. And it's beeping in my ear, and that bothers me. Um, but yeah. The, what I'm looking forward to is the weekend. Lena has the weekend off. I have every weekend off. So I thought she only had Saturday off. Turns out she has the whole weekend off. We're taking the dog down to the vet on Saturday morning. Because he um, he's limping. He has a bruise, I think, on his paw. So he's limping a little bit. And uh, his eyes are all red and goopy. They shout. Sorry about that. I don't know why I put my head down, like, towards the microphone. I should probably, like, go to the side, because if I do that, I'm going, like, right in the microphone. I apologize. I'll, I'll try to stop that from happening. Um, but, yeah, his eyes are, are getting red and goopy, so he needs some eye drops. But he's scratching more, so we think he needs to go back on antibiotics. Uh, just to kind of kick that, um, the yeast out of his system a little bit more before... You know, it gets too bad. Uh, we're also going to get him multivitamins and joint vitamins. Vitamins for his joints because he's a big dog. So his joints are going to start to to wear. Um, wow, that rain's just coming down. 25 milliliters of rain today. equate to in centimeters of snow. I don't know. I'm not looking forward to the snow, even though I would love to have snow on Christmas. But yeah. Oh okay, yeah, so this weekend <laughs> got distracted. This weekend, um so in the winter Usually on cold days, even though it's not going to be cold, but it's going to be a weekend that we have together, so that's why we're doing this. Usually on, like, really cold days, we're, we have off or, or whatnot. Um, like, if we have, like, a couple days off together or whatever. Lena and I will take the mattress off the futon from the man cave and put it on the floor in front of the wood stove in the living room, and we will have a camp out. And I love doing this. This is one of my favorite things to do. Um... Because it's like a little mini sleepover in the in the living room. So her and I cuddle up on that and we watch TV together and we have the dog with us. and It's good. It's good. I like it. So we're planning on doing that all weekend. Yay! Camp out in the living room all weekend! We used to take our mattress, but that's not happening. Too much work. Yeah. Camp outs. I like my camp outs. Uh, what kind of weird things do you do that makes you kind of feel like a kid? If you are a kid, then there you go. Enjoy it. Um, 
What are those little things that you you do that makes you feel all giddy and, and fun? I like our little campouts. It makes me feel like a, a kid again. And I'm closer to the switch if my uh, DS dies. Yep. That's weird that that's what I'm thinking about. It's okay, I'm weird. It's all right, no worries. Um, but yeah. Also, Star Wars comes out soon. Like in a few days. I won't be going to see it. I have no one to go see it with. Melinda's already going with her uh, mom. And, uh, I don't really want to even think about going with Melinda and her mom. It'd be really weird. I've never met her mom before. But Lena doesn't go to the movies, and she doesn't like sci-fi movies, so I'm kind of screwed. Um, that's okay. I will, I'll, I will, um... I'll figure it out. I still haven't seen Rogue One, so... And if that's on Netflix and I still haven't seen it yet. Maybe I should do that this weekend. Maybe while Lena's asleep. I usually let her have control of the TV and I just put in my headphones. It's called compromise, guys. That's what a relationship's all about. Compromise and communication. You gotta compromise because you can't always get your way. Because that's just rude and mean. And you don't want to be rude and mean to the person you're supposed to be caring about most. So, yeah. Don't be rude and mean to your partner. And compromise. Even when you feel like you shouldn't have to. Compromise. It's about taking equal responsibility for things. And just being nice to one another, really. And that sounds stupid. Like, yeah, be nice to the person you're in a relationship with. Guys, that is something that people really need to know, unfortunately. Because some people aren't nice to the people they're in relationships with. Actually, a larger number than I'd like to admit are not nice to the people that they're in relationships with. And I don't mean... Like, periodically be nice to them. No, you should just be nice to them in general. Yeah, it's okay to argue every once in a while. Lena and I argue every once in a while. We get into a fight. Whatever. Not as often as we used to because we've worked on our communication skills and we're no longer scared to tell each other when something bothers each other. That took a while. But we still do fight. We're not perfect. Not even close. And I need you guys to understand that we are not a perfect couple. There's no such thing as a perfect couple. We're not even something that you want as a goal. Like this whole relationship goals and you see like a good couple together, you don't know what their relationship really is. Because when you see them, they're in public. You don't know what it's like behind closed doors. You don't know if that really is what you want your goals to be. Don't wish for something that you don't know the entire story about. I'm just putting that out there. Because guess what? Wishes sometimes do come true. Lena is everything I ever asked for. And prayers, by the way, they come true too. Not all the time, but sometimes. I ask for someone exactly like Lena. Shorter than me. Shares my beliefs. Um, was a li good listener. Uh, not manipulative. Stuff like that. Like, I had a list. And Lena hits pretty much every single tick on that list. So, be careful what you wish for. I know that that sounds like something, but there's another thing on there that I was like, I'll even have this if I have to, and that's what happened, and it's, it's not perfect. I was just really desperate when I wished for it at that point. Though, everything else is perfect. Well, not perfect, but like, what I wanted. Um, other than green eyes. I asked for green eyes, I didn't get green eyes, but that's fine. I like Lena's brown eyes. Because they change color brown, which I think is really neat. Because you don't really normally see that in someone with brown eyes. You don't really see that change color happen. So that's really neat. I like that. It's even better than green eyes. I got cool brown eyed girl. Um, yeah, yeah. I even had a list with 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 uh, 
with, with eye color. She's got brown hair. I was a little superficial at the time. You know, it was like listed like shorter than me, green eyes, brown hair. And then it got into the other stuff. And Lena hits almost every marker, which is great. She's everything I ever wanted. But you got to be careful what you wish for. So if you look at a couple out, you know, in the mall or whatever, you're like, oh, relationship goals. You don't know what that's like when they're not in public because people will act normally. I'm not going to say all the time, but people will normally act more proper when they're out in public than they will behind closed doors where nobody can see them. So you don't know what it actually is like for that couple. You don't know if they fight constantly or if she throws things or he throws things or whatever. So be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you say you want your goals to be. Don't judge it off of another relationship. I didn't judge what I wanted off of another relationship. I just knew what I wanted in a relationship. And that's what I, that's what I, <laughs> that's what I prayed for. I'm not gonna lie. That's what I prayed for. Um, but you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be careful. Don't use another relationship as goals. And that's me telling you, don't use my relationship as, you know, oh, that's relationship goals. It's not, trust me. We are not perfect. Nobody is perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship. You are going to fight with one another and that's healthy. Because if, if you're not fighting every once in a while, then someone's not being honest. And if there's no honesty in a relationship, it's going to falter. It's going to break down. You need honesty in a relationship. It is honesty and communication are your biggest keys to a relationship. There's another one, but this is a family friendly, friendly show. But you've got to understand that these things are important. If you have communication, but no, you know, other thing or, oh man, I forget what the first one was. That's bad. When you forget what your first one was, I said communication and honesty. Yeah, that's what it is. I was like, trust. But if you're communicating and you're honest, then you're going to trust one another. Communication and honesty build trust. You got to understand that communication and honesty build trust. Without honesty, there is no trust. If you are deceitful and then you're found out, no trust no more. So communication and honesty is the best way to go. Um, without those things, uh, if you have honesty but no communication, okay, you're being honest but you're not communicating enough, therefore, things break down. You need those two things. You need honesty and you need communication because trust falls in between those. So remember, those are the things you want to look for in a relationship. You don't want, oh, the relationship goes, look how cute they are. And they're holding hands and she's like, you know, and he's all like whatever. Or he's like this and he's like this or she's like this and she's like this together. And they're so cute. and blah. blah. No, because you do not know what it is like when they're not around other people. As humans, we want to be accepted for the most part. Not all of us. And that's cool. For those who don't want to be accepted, that's great. We need those people as well in the world. Without those people, life would be really boring. Because um, even though they're not looking for acceptance, we can still accept them. You know what I mean? Because it's not something that they're looking for particularly. But their free minds make it an interesting place to live. Um, so you need to, but by default, evolutionarily, ev evolution, you know what I'm trying to say when it comes to evolution, <laughs> we want to be accepted because we are stronger in groups. Um, that's an evolutionary trait. There's the word evolutionary trait. Um, you're probably wondering, hey, if you are someone who believes in God, why are you talking about evolution? Because I believe that those two things can go hand in hand. Mind blown. Why can't science and, and Christianity work hand in hand? I don't know why people don't think that that's a thing, but it can be. I'm just saying. It only makes sense. Um, but yeah. Um, it is an, it is an evolutionary trait that we... That we, um, 
that we want to be accepted because groups are stronger. Because, like, back in the day, you know, we would need to hunt in groups because we were stronger in a group. So, evolutionary traits deem that we want to be accepted in a group and we will do what we can to be accepted in a group. That is why some people, uh, like myself, uh, have problem uh, not mimicking accents when we hear when we hear them because as an evolutionary trait, we want to be accepted and not be someone who stands out from everybody else but blend in because you want to be like the others so that you're not ostracized uh, because, again, you're stronger in a group. So when it comes to how that, how that filters back, you know, quick science lesson, even though I don't know the science behind it, I'll be real. Uh, I like science, but I really didn't do well in science and I didn't really study a lot of history either. So we're just jo going by what logically makes sense, but I'm pretty sure that the whole group pack thing is a, is actually a thing. I am like 99% sure. Um, just think about it logistically. Just let's be real. Um, but how that ties back into relationships and, and people being different behind closed doors is that that need to be, that drive to be accepted and part of a group would cause you to hide traits that a group would find um, not okay. So if you're a bad person and... Uh, you're an abuser in a relationship, you're not going to show that type of behavior in front of others. You would do that only behind closed doors because you know that it is not socially acceptable to be that kind of a person. So, like, do you, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. So don't kind of, like, idolize other people's relationships because you have no idea, no idea what it's like behind closed doors. And I'm not saying this from experience. I've never really been in an abusive relationship. But I know people who have been. And I never would have guessed. Because you see... Because they can't, they can't hide all the time. But you can kind of see those... In those times where they kind of lose control for a second. You're like, mm, something's not right there. But you don't know for sure. You don't know if they were just really stressed or something. And that's why they reacted in the way they did. You don't know. Like, I don't get violent when I'm stressed, but I get angry. But I don't get violent. Like, I'm not a... I don't hit people. It's not my digs. Me, <laughs> no matter how angry I am, for whatever reason, I still hold a sense of control. No matter how angry I've ever gotten. Because I could get super mad at let's say somebody or whatever and you know how people like you see in movies and I've actually seen people do this where they rip pictures of themselves and another person up into little pieces and I'm like why on earth would you do that if you don't have another copy of that and that's actually a really nice picture you're going to regret that and that's always on my mind when I'm angry regardless of how angry I've been and I've been pretty furious at times I still won't break things and I won't rip things that I know I will probably regret later on. I've done it once because I was like, screw being in control. I'm not going to regret this, even though in the back of my mind, I knew I was going to regret it. But I wanted to prove to myself that I could be a badass and break something. And then I felt really bad about it because I actually really like those sunglasses. Yep. I still regret that. So... Again, you don't know what things are like behind closed doors. So don't idolize somebody else's relationship. And that means don't idolize mine because it's far from perfect. I'm not saying that we have a terrible relationship and you don't ever want to be like us. But be who you are and be what you want in a relationship. That's what you have to do. Be what you want in a relationship. If you want a trusting and you know honest and communicative person in a relationship, be that person. Because most likely you're going to attract a person like that. Be who you're looking for in a relationship. Because if you're not what you want in a relationship, then how is anybody else going to want what you want in a relationship? You know what I mean? Though differences do, like differences in, an, in a relationship are good. Like Lena and I are complete opposites for the most part. But what we're looking for in a relationship is the same thing. 
We're looking for an honest person, a communicative person, you know, someone who's actually going to care about us, someone who's going to take care of, of us, you know, someone who is willing to do what they can to, to make their family work. Someone who's going to fight for um, the relationship if things get rough, you know, who's going to fight for one another when things get tough, you know, someone's going to be there who's going to be their rock when they need it. Like we found what we were looking for in a relationship, but us, our personalities and what we enjoy are completely different. I'm a very emotional person. I'm upfront about that. I know that I have a lot of emotions, right? Like I am, I feel things strongly. Um, and I, I'm so empathetic that I can't watch awkward situations in TV or on movies I have to leave the room because I feel so bad for that, that character that it makes me upset. <laughs> so I feel a lot for people. Lena, on the other hand, is very logistical, very, um, you know, like very on point. But at the same time, like you would think, oh, you know, like the creative, she's not a creative person because, you know, if they're logist, if they're a logical individual, usually they're not very creative. No, she can paint and she's really good at it and her ideas are really good and she's just, she's, she's, I'm jealous sometimes of, of, of how she is, but I'm sure she's jealous of me and how I'm able to understand and, and, um, connect with people emotionally the way that I do. Not that she can't, it just, it, there's a lot more effort that has to go into it than with myself. Um, so I'm the emotions, she's the, the logic, um, She's the athletic one. I'm not athletic in, in any sense of the word. Um, she's super passionate about things. I can be. Um, so we're, we're different. She likes crime shows. I think that they're scary. Uh, certain ones. Like I can watch Bones and I can watch... Um, a few other ones where there's comedy in it a little bit. Like I can do with like a little bit of comedy here and there. Uh, I have to have that because if it's serious the whole time, I, I can have nightmares. Like she used to watch Law and Order before bed and I started having nightmares. So I told her she couldn't do that anymore because it literally every time it was on before bed, I would have a nightmare that someone was going to come into my house and kill me because those are things that could happen in real life. Those things happen in real life. My fantasy stuff, nobody's going to try to come and kill me with a lightsaber because they don't exist. Just throwing that out there. I don't have to worry about... I mean, kind of, kind of have to worry about aliens, but at the same time, you don't really because... We haven't had contact as far as we are aware. But again, I talked about aliens before. Mathematically, it is impossible for aliens not to exist. Period. Like, if you look it up, mathematically speaking, the likelihood of Earth being the only planet in our entire universe without li with, with, with life is, like, impossible, pretty much. It is, it's not impossible, but it's highly, highly, highly improbable. Like, there's a math, um, just judging by what we can even see in the universe so far, which we can't see all of it. It was unlikely. So if we really like we don't know the vastness of the universe. So basically it's impossible. It is almost impossible that we are the only life form. Now life form doesn't mean either they are behind us in evolution or they are so far advanced evolutionary wise that they don't need us. You know what I mean? Like they don't need us. So they're not going to come looking for us because they probably know we exist. But they don't care. Because they're like, no. That they, there's no way they're ever going to come and find us. They're, they're not like we're like dinosaurs to them pretty much. Um, wow, this is taking a weird term. But yeah, so back to relationships. Um I don't even know how I got on that. I'll have to watch this back of later on and see how I ended up with aliens. Oh, right, because TV. Um, so we're very opposite, Lena and I, in those aspects. She's not really girly. 
You guys really haven't gotten a good look at what Lena's like. Um, but she's not super girly. She's, she's, she wears, like, I wear dudes clothes because I find them more comfortable. That and girls clothes are really, like, for the most part, not my digs because they're very, well, feminine and I'm not a feminine individual. Um, but, yeah, like, Lena, Lena wears girls clothes, but she's more of, like, one of those sporty people. You know what I mean? Sometimes she'll dress up and she's, like, really nice looking. She's really nice looking anyway, in my opinion. I find I have a very good looking wife, which I am very lucky for. Because not only did I get a good person, I got a good looking person. But I always told her that was a bonus. Like, I fell in love with who she was as a person because I had never met her. And I had already started to have feelings for her. So, it's just the way it is. I fell in love with a person, not the outer shell of who she is. The fact that I find her very good looking is a bonus. Now, you could say I find her really good looking because I love her. Could very well be it. Our minds do that. Um, what if people said that she's good looking, but they could be lying? I don't know. I find Lena very, very pretty. I find her gorgeous. She's the most beautiful person I've ever met, inside and out. And I'm very lucky to have her. Um, but our relationship is hard fought. Like, we had to go through a lot of rough times together to be where we are. So again, idolizing someone's relationship, you don't know what they've been through either to get to where they are. The fact that my relationship is as good as it is right now is hard fought. It was a hard fought win for both of us because we both had to get over some things that had hurt us in the past. And I had to get over ideals that didn't make sense. And she had to learn to... Um, kind of accept herself um, because she'd had people tell her in the past that her, her, that her past was too much or her as a person is too much. Lena is not, as much as I feel she's a perfect person, she's not perfect. Neither am I. I have my downfalls. I have a lot of flaws like everybody does. Like I have my fl flaws and one of them is I get angry. I'm a very, I can get very angry and when I get angry, it's, I don't know. It, it, if I get super angry, I just scream a lot and that's one of my faults that I am learning to control. Uh, I have faults where uh, I have trust issues that have nothing to do with Lena. Lena's never given me a reason not to trust her. But I have trust issues from things that have happened to me in the past. Um, sometimes I can be super pig-headed about things. And refuse to see reason. Which is something that I don't like in a person. So I don't like that about myself. And there's a few other things that, that make me not a perfect... I have ADHD, which is really hard. I don't think people really understand how hard it is to be ADHD. Regardless if you're medicated or not. Um... There's a lot of things that come with that other than attention span. Like people just think, oh, you just can't concentrate on stuff. No, there's so much more than that. Um, or you can't sit still. It's so much more than just not being able to sit still. It's so much more than not being able to concentrate. It's hard to be... We think differently. We have a harder time with with life in general, like we forget to do things that regular people do all the time. Like we constantly need reminders of regular everyday things. Like my wife sometimes has to remind me to eat. The fact that she has to remind me to do the thing that is life sustaining is a little weird, but she sometimes has to do that. There was a time like if I'm getting really, like, if I'm very busy, I will not eat. If I'm super busy or if I'm never bored, I don't eat. Because the only time I eat by myself, like, I, I make myself eat, is if I'm bored. If I'm focused on something and you're like, but ADHD means you can't focus. No. It means it's hard to focus on things that we don't want to focus on or we don't find interesting. Or is not being presented at, into... In, uh, presented to us in a way that 
we find intriguing. We constantly need to be stimulated by something. Because our brains are constantly going. Like you may think that your brain is constantly going, but it's so much more than that. It is like, you know, when you can't sleep at night because things keep flowing through your brain. Take that and times it by 10. And that's us when our brains are kind of supposed to be at rest. Our brains are continuously going, always thinking, always doing something. We're always moving. We're always doing something. But if we find something fascinating, we will hyper-focus on that and nothing will take us out of that focus. Like it takes a lot to snap us out of it. So... If I was ever researching something I found fascinating, I would research for hours without getting up from where I was. So I would forget to eat. So my wife has to remind me to do that if I'm super focused on something. As long as I'm not bored, I won't eat. But we're running out of time because this thing will only let me record for like 33 minutes before it, di- before it cuts off. And we're already at 31. But again, don't idolize someone else's relationship. Just be who you want in a relationship and things will work out for you. I hope. I have faith that it'll work out for you. Anyway, I got to get going. Um, Kid charming out.